Let us offer the fruit of our lips. Hear the sacrifice, the fruit of our lips. Let us offer the fruit of our lips. Hear the sacrifice, the fruit of our lips. There we are. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Good evening, Shane Fisher. Thank you for being here. Good evening, Paul. Welcome to another episode to the another. Welcome to the another. Welcome to another episode of The Fruit of Our Lips. My name is Paul Mays, and I'm a Christian, and this is Shane Fisher, who is also a Christian. I'm glad that you are with us. It is a good Saturday. We've had a good time today. I uh, had family over and had a lot of fun. Did you have fun today, Shane? Oh, yeah. I always have fun. You do. You have fun working, don't you? <laughs> Every day. Oh, all yeah. Yeah. The workingest. Well, I'll go ahead and broach this while we're here. While we're getting ready. I uh, have my fingers in a cup of ice because I burned them when I was cooking today on open fire. I was going to set some... Um, patties on some cast iron that was on a rack on open fire and the smoke got in my eyes so i closed my eyes right as i was setting the patty down and my fingers went into hot grease from the previous burgers and i burned my skin on my two middle fingers there so i've been in the ice for um four hours or something Three or four hours I've been holding them in a cup of ice and just replacing the water, replacing the ice. So that's not good, but that's all right. I have ice, so that's something to be thankful for, right? Mm -hmm. So we had kids over. We had family over. My wife's family came over, and we um, grilled out and played in the creek and had a good old time. It was really fun, lots of fun. A bunch of kids and a bunch of adults having a good time out in God's creation here in southwest Virginia. So who's with us? We've got Christine Woodall has beat Jenny Blackwell. Amazing. <laughs> Somebody had a comment before our sister Jenny Blackwell came in the room. <laughs> Christine up in the North Woods of Wisconsin's with us. CJ's with us. Good to see you, CJ. Stephanie's with us. Good to see you, sis. Kelly Joe's with. Hello to you. Sue Ross is with. Good. Miracle OB. I hope I pronounced that correctly glad to have you glad you're with us good evening to shirley ouchie yes it was painful yes the skin rolled up i didn't need to tell you all that but i did apparently yeah it'll be all right i'm good it's all right we'll be all right so hello to everybody I'm so glad with we are with us we have a beautiful um, compelling song about christian evidences would that be an accurate description of it Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's another Christian evidence is teaching him. And Shane started this one. I actually know how this song came about. I remember. You remember it, that? Mm -hmm. we Janice. Were, Hi. Sorry. It was, it was in December. We went with my parents. Uh, Emily and I went with my parents to the falls. There's a lot of falls over there in Middle Tennessee. Oh, yeah. And uh, just being there at the, uh, I think it was Berkeley Falls. I can't remember the name of the falls now. For okay. the life of me. Mm -hmm. But... I was just looking at those falls, and uh, all of a sudden, this tune came to mind. I'm like, I got to record. Gotta yes, record. yes, yes. You better pull that phone out when you get those ideas, because they're fleeting, you know, even for somebody who does it all the time. You know, I do it all the time, and it's it's fleeting, and you better get it while the getting's good. I do. I've stepped away before. I can't tell you how many times I've stepped out of, um, like, Bible class that, I mean, I just have an idea. I cannot let it go. Um, I, I know that, uh, pearls of wisdom, which is a really old one of mine. I escaped. This is, this is how old this one is. I escaped to the bathroom in the basement of the church building of the West side church building. Cause like the Eddie Gilpin pulpit minister at the time started the Bible class. And he said, I've got a few pearls of wisdom from blah, 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 blah. blah. That's about all I caught. And then I was like, ding, 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 ding. There it is. And then in my head in silence, I didn't, I couldn't make a sound. 
it was going. And I was going, I've, I've got to catch this. So I think I wrote the chorus in my head in silence. And then I escaped to the basement bathroom. And this is how long ago it was. I used a flip phone to call my own voicemail. <laughs> and I left myself a voicemail to save it. That's how long ago that was. And then, yeah. And then right away I wrote the first verse and I was like, I got to get back to Bible class. So I recorded the chorus and the first verse just so I'd have everything down, you know, the melody. And then I went back to Bible class and of course my brain wouldn't shut off and I was still um, writing in silence from the pew. So you aren't missing anything, Jimmy. <laughs> Paul's just telling about one of his old songs. You missed this. Oh, did I do that? I I burned myself on grease. Yikes. Egg white is good on burns. I did not know that. I've got um, aloe cane, so aloe vera and then some kind of cane. So I'm just kind of numbing something. I tried it. It didn't work well. But ice is working like a champ. And I mean like a champ. Flip phone. Yeah, <laughs> we used to suffer through flip phones, didn't we? Now we got these powerful computers stronger than the rockets had when NASA went to <laughs> the moon. Somehow better, better, uh, better mo movie production studios than than old uh, Spielberg had in, in 77 when he did the Star Wars. Hard to believe. All right. So the hymn is called Can I Know? And it is a Christian evidence as him, and it is gorgeous. It is actually long. It's one of Shane's long songs. <laughs> he does that every once in a while, but mm -hmm. you know what can you do? It, it is what it is. And I, I um, when I recorded it, th there are different. Sometimes you you'll hear a hymn and you're like, this is too long. And sometimes you'll hear a hymn and and you'll be like, well, you'll be like, that was good. And you'll be like, I wonder how long it was. Oh, it must have been three minutes, maybe two and a half, three minutes. And then you're like, oh. And it was a lot longer than you expected because it's just good. So I feel like this this hymn is good enough that it, it is okay for it to be long. I have a personal preference on hymn length. My ideal length for a hymn is uh, 2.5 minutes. That is my opinion. Two, 2.5 minutes. That That's it. That Past that, it, it's, it, it's just going on too long. That's just my opinion. There are several exceptions to that. Even that I've written, I generally write around two, 2.5 minutes. Shane, Shane writes longer ones, and this is one where it's just, it's mm -hmm. good. I'll try, I'll try some vinegar. I'll try vinegar. I wouldn't be surprised. Jonathan Exum's with. Good to see you, brother. Good. <laughs> I saw that. Jonathan got a truck. Yes, he did. He's got himself a sil Silverado, unless I'm mistaken. I wonder, I wonder what the longest hymn there is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, probably uh, we could be, we could break the Guinness World Book of World Records, Paul. <laughs> you, you did whatever. You, what was it? Six minutes. Still on the throne is. That's five minutes. Oh, something. I was thinking it was pushing seven. Uh, go, uh, go. Uh, you came down is, I think the longest one. Yeah, ten verses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't it like seven minutes? Uh, close to it. Yeah. I mean, this is long. So Christine's wanting to know how long this one is. You know what? I think it's time to play it. We'll go ahead and play it. Uh, you know, it's, it's musically it, Denise, it comes from a, a place of, uh, being a, um, a, 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 I don't want to use that. I'm using it anyway, a lover of pop songs. I love pop songs and by pop, I do mean pop and country and rock. I mean, uh, popular is what I mean when I say that. Um, I, I just think that, well, a, a perfect length for a pop song is three and a half minutes because you have a solo in there. That's just my opinion. I like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, solo, chorus, or something like that for a pop song, meaning pop, country, rock, blues, whatever. That's my opinion on that. But with hymns, we generally have a verses and chorus only. So it's just that, uh, it's just an artistic thing. It's definitely not a doctrinal thing. It's only just like an artistic preference. And, and, and I don't have any, I don't have any authority. Of course, I'm just saying, you know, less than three minutes. Yeah. For Jimmy. Yeah. That's generally it. Pop is the sound the guitar makes when you try to pluck the strings. <laughs> oh, Jonathan, he's on point tonight. All right. Seven 11 songs. 
Oh, when they're just too short, I guess. Yeah. We've I you know, there are some that I think are great and they're super short. Um, I'll give you a pop song and I'll give you a hymn uh, because both, both of them are relevant here. So I think um, there's at least one Dion Warwick song and one Elvis song. That's right around a minute 10 or something like that. And you, you know, you don't even realize that it's that short. I mean, that is short. I think that I want to go to heaven by Marie Kinsella that I recorded. I think that one is just barely over a minute. I think it's about a minute 10 or something like that. And, and I'm, I'm fine with it. I don't think it needs any more. Um, Use me father that Deb Hibbard and I did. I'm sorry, Mesa Forteza, Deb Hibbard and I did. Um, it was too short. And I wrote a, f a third verse for it. The fourth, third or fourth verse for it. I can't remember, but it, it needed to be, longer i mean i mean it's just a personal artistic preference on that so i said it and I'm, i've I've already gone too short too long wait same seven words repeated 11 times 7 11 so gotcha 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 yeah the the modern contemporary i i make fun of them by saying um i love jesus jesus is my friend jesus is my friend jesus 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 the song's over <laughs> what did you what did you teach me there like nothing. Okay. I don't know. We shall assemble. Um, I don't know that song. Yeah. All right. And so I keep saying it. Go ahead, Shane. Sorry. Well, we shall assemble on the mountain. Mm -mm, you don't don't. Okay. Mm -mm, don't know it. Let's play right. the song. <laughs> All right. I keep saying it. We will now. We've, we've uh, been visiting here for how long? For 12 minutes. All right. So the hymn is called can I know it is a Christian evidence a song for those who are just now showing up. We're so glad you're with us. And uh, we pray this hymn is a blessing to you. And now when I click this button, it's going to make us be quiet, whether I want to be or not. So here we go. Let's listen. Can I know, can I know, can I know, can I know that you exist? Can I know, can I know, can I know, can I know that you Yes, I know you exist. Yes, I know you are real. Yes, I know you are my God. For I know the great design demands a designer. For I know the universe demands a Can I know? Can I know? Can I 
know your son exists. And I know, and I know, that he is real. And I know, and I know, he is divine. Yes, I know he Yes, I know he is real. Yes, I know he is divine. For he has fulfilled the prophecies a chosen one. For he has performed the miracles they are verified. He was seen alive again by many in the flesh. For this I know, for this I know, and I'm without excuse. Can I know? Yes, I know I am saved. Yes, I know this assured. Yes, I know I'm confident. For I know that Jesus gave himself for all mankind. For I know that from the cross the blood in love was poured out. For he came and then obeyed unto the point of death. For this I know, for this I know, and I Yeah, it's pretty moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a blessing to me. It's a blessing to work on that. Well, everybody ready to get started? Yeah, let's um, dig in. Dig in. Yeah, let's uh, dig in. <clears throat> yes, I know that he exists. Why? The Bible tells me so. Rita's with us. Good to see you. Debbie is here. Hey there, you two. Good to see you, sis. Deb says it's a beautiful song. Good night to Douglas. Good night. Good to see you. Phyllis is with. Good. Thank you, Phyllis. It is a beautiful song. Shane brought that to me, and it has it was a fight to get it done. It was it was a challenge. It was a good one and was worth working on. Darlene's with and Kathleen is with. Good to see y'all. Shirley says, I absolutely love this song. We haven't even released this yet. This is you're, you're hearing it for the first time. It's not been public any other way, just private. A few, a few folks here and there. We're glad that you find it beautiful. There you go. Here you go. That will move people in the pew or it will move you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six minutes, 20 seconds. Christine's <laughs> on it. She wanted to know. She got her answer and then she gave it to everybody. It is long. It is absolutely. Thank you, Darlene. Beautiful song. Good. I'm so glad you like it. Wonderful. Hi, everyone. It's wonderful. Look at this. Another new favorite. That is very encouraging. 
very encouraging. I, I mean, I love it. I loved recording it. It the 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 thing that that was telling for me about the length being okay was that when I was done with it, I was guessing at how long it was, and I underestimated by a long, long, long shot. I don't know what I said. Was it? I think maybe I said like four and a half, four. I don't know. I know I underestimated it. Mm-hmm. I Shane, don't remember. Keep me busy. What'd you say, Shane? I don't remember what you said. I, know, I, remember, I know I was off by a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're off. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan. All right. Jimmy's got a comment for us. It is impossible to say that you know that God does not exist. That's a fact. You can say you doubt. You can say you don't believe, but you cannot say that you know he doesn't exist and be intellectually honest. You would have to know everything. If there was just one thing you didn't know, it could be that God does exist. Yep, that's solid. All right, Shane, turn it loose on us. I think I got the PowerPoint ready. There we are. All right. So let's get into the the meat of it, you could say. So verse 1, we have, you want to read that, Paul? Yeah. Can I know, can I know that you exist? Can I know, can I know that you are real? Can I know, can I know that you're with me? Yes, I know you exist. Yes, I know you are real. Yes, I know you are my God. So throughout this, you'll see that we always ask the questions in the verses, and then we respond with the answers that we can, in the affirmative, know the answers. Perfect. And of course, we know um, from the Bible, but also what's called, so to speak, natural revelation. Uh, that we know this to be true, sure. but we also know it from special revelation, which is the Bible. Mm-hmm. And so Psalm 19, 1 and 2, the heavens declare the glory of God. Ferment shows his handiwork. The end to not day utter speech and nine to night reveals knowledge. And then Romans 1, 20, where it says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Man, I love that. Dude, <laughs> that that's the verse that that that's the verse that keeps getting hit on you that throughout the whole song. It just over and over and over again. You are, you are, I am, I am without excuse. We we are we are the things that are made. We are the things that are made, and we don't have an excuse. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Paul does this quite a bit throughout his videos. He'll go out in nature and show, you know, frog or crawdads or whatever. <laughs> I yeah, mean, all just showing all the design, which we're going to talk yep. about. Yep. Design indicates yeah. a designer. That's and you made it. You you brought that beautiful, potent truth into these these lyrics. A design indicates a designer. Uh, I love how Paul, the apostle, though, he he, he, he gives a paradox here. Okay. And what does invisible mean? It means not seen. Okay. But he says the invisible attributes are clearly seen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. we see that design demands a desire. It shows his intelligence, for example. Yes. Ma- I mean, there's math everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then we got, uh, I didn't want to take this verse out of its context. I want to kind of read the whole thing. Um, okay. So, Paul, you want to read that? Sure. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him, who appointed him, as Moses also was faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. You know, that's a great truth that Hebrew Dreyer gives. Every house is built by someone. I don't, I don't think I've ever met anybody who kind of looked at a house and was like, wow, that was amazing. The wind and... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this <laughs> reverse <laughs> rust and you know, that, that tree just grew and just all of a sudden it that, that tree was no longer round. It was in planks. I don't know how that happened. The iron just made itself come out of that dirt and assemble and smelt it itself. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, you know, I'm sorry, but atheism is just laughable. I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, it takes way more faith to believe in atheism. Full of said in his heart, there is no God. Amen. Um, So then we talk about, all right, so I know that he exists, but why? How do I know that? 
Yeah, and then you start with four. You start with the word four there. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about pretty much the three main arguments that we use for God's existence. And they got technical names, but I wanted to use, uh, you know, uh, but we, we're just going to keep with the simple stuff here. So you want to read the verse, cor chorus one? <laughs> First chorus, for I know the great design demands a designer. For I know the universe demands a powerful cause. For I know a moral law demands a lawgiver. For this I know, for this I know, and I'm without excuse. So when I think about uh, the argument we're going to give for God's, for design, you know, you think about order, you just got to give some definitions to these things. So order is interrelated in such a way as to constitute regularity. Arrangement is the adaptation of parts to one another. The purpose, the reason for which something is done. Design being the purpose or aim. And the design, designer being the one who is the purposer. So uh, Paul's, you're familiar with tractors, right? Yay. <laughs> So, Paul, what, what's the what is, what's a tractor for? Or what is, well, it would be for farming. It would be for moving things, moving earth, um, mm -hmm. digging, pulling. Mm -hmm. So, if there is order, regularity, arrangement, you know, put all the parts together, and the purpose for which you just you know explained for farming, then there is design. And then we go even further. There is order arrangement purpose in the tractor. Therefore, there is design. And then we go even further than that. If there's design in the tractor, there must be a designer. There is design in the tractor. Therefore, there is a designer. And, yep. you know, we could talk um, all about those premises. And, I mean, everybody I know would say, yep, that, all those are true. You know, I yep. mean, <laughs> I don't know anybody who wants to go against that. And, I think about this uh, concept, what's been called irreducible complexity. And basically all it is, is this uh, one man named Behe used uh, an example of a mousetrap. And of course, you know, you have to have all the parts to that mousetrap. And if you don't have all the parts, then it ain't going to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the mouse is going to get away with the cheese. Right. So same thing here with regards to, for example, the respiratory system and how that's is there order, arrangement, and purpose in it? Well, yeah. for us to breathe so that we can live. Yeah. Um, so we could, you know, use that same argument with the respiratory system in it is what's great. And then we go even, you know, let's just go even further. What about the universe itself? Well, we're yeah. so far mm -hmm. away from the sun that, mm -hmm. you know, or if we were so far, I mean, sorry, if we were so close to the sun, we get, we burn up. If we were so yeah. far away from it from the right position now, then we would get freeze to death. Right. So, yep. I use uh, intricate dance of the heavens is the terminology I use. So we could, you know, put that if there's order arrangement purpose in the universe, then there is design. And so, mm -hmm. and so forth. Yeah. yeah. So we, I always say, I always use this at the end and, you know, you, you can always say you cannot have a poem without a poet. poet. You cannot have art without an Artist. artist can i have an invention without an mm -hmm. inventor can i have a book without a author right. sure and you cannot have design without a designer, designer. amen somebody <laughs> it makes logical sense yes you know? yeah and Indeed. then there's our second one where for i know the universe demands a powerful cause which is normally called a uh, cosmological argument and basically it it, it goes to this like when you think about worldviews, we all talk about what is the ultimate reality of things. Is it just matter, or and or is there something more? And then, how can I know? How can I know whether you know it's just matter, or is there something beyond that? Why is it that we? What is it that we can't? Can we know? And why is it that we can know those things? Well, Basically, I just want to bring this to your all's attention. Either matter or mind is eternal. Now, let me show you why, you know, some atheists might say, well, there is no such concept as the mind. There's only matter. But uh, if you look at what uh, Thompson said in defense of God's existence, he, he there was a guy named Dr. Eccles who 
did some research on this. And here's what he said. He says, in the past, atheists suggested that the mind is nothing more than a function of the brain. Thus, the mind and the brain are the same and matter is all that exists. However, such a viewpoint no longer is credible intellectually, thanks to the experiments of British neurologist Sir John Eccles. Dr. Eccles documented the mind is more than merely physical by so showing that the supplementary motor area of the brain may be fired by mere intention to do something without the motor cortex of the brain, which controls muscle movements operating. In effect, and I, I like this illustration, in effect, the mind is the brain, what a librarian is to the library. Wow. So. Wow. So, so when you think about either matter or mind is eternal, but something eternal exists and something exists now. And I always ask people this question, you know, I, I, I like thinking deep about some questions, Paul. And one of those questions is why is there something rather than nothing? <laughs> uh, you know, you, 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 you begin to really ponder that. And um, it makes sense that, okay, I came from my parents and then my parents came from the grandparents, but you can, nobody believes in a, what, what's called an infinite regress where you just keep on kind of like the dominoes just keeps stacking dominoes forever and ever. Yeah. There must be some starting point. There must be some beginning. Yeah. So, so, Good. well, so the, the universe, it began to exist, but something had to cause the universe to come into existence. So therefore either matter or mind is eternal but matter's not eternal. We, I mean, that's pretty clear. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I usually bring about four questions with this. And Paul just so happened to <laughs> burn his hand on grease today. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think Paul would agree and say, um, uh, if, I, if you were to say, uh, hey, Paul, is the universe an illusion? Yeah. Well, what? Let's just touch that stove, Paul. And yeah. See what that hot burning <laughs> stove and see what happens. I'm unfortunately your illustration of the moment. <laughs> yes. Well, is the unit. So that the answer is a no to that. Is the universe eternal? Well, the second law of thermodynamics says everything's wearing down. And so there mm -hmm. must have been some kind of beginning point. Right. And then was the universe made from nothing? Well, you know, from nothing, nothing comes as a true principle. Uh, but there are sadly people out there who think that somehow you can get a whole big universe from nothing, but yeah, that's just yeah. crazy thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But was the universe created? Yeah. Well, that makes the most sense. Yeah, had to have been God speaking it into existence. Mm -hmm. Um, so matter's not eternal, therefore, mind is eternal. Well, whose mind? God's mind, an eternal mind, a mind that lies outside of space, outside of time, outside of matter. Well, that sounds like a great definition for God. So, yeah. And I love Genesis 1, 26 and 27, because God gave us the mind to know the, that we can know the evidence that he does exist. Right. So you want to read that scripture for us? Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. 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 Sorry. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Okay. And then our third example, for I know a moral law demands a lawgiver. And this one, I believe, is the... To me, it's, well, I mean, I don't know. It seems to be the strongest because it really hits you. Um, and I, I'm thinking about, I call, it, I call it the moral argument. And it's pretty simple. If God does not exist, then there are no objective moral values or obligations. Right. But there are objective moral values yeah. and obligations. Mm -hmm. Therefore, God does exist. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is a guy who was an atheist. Will Provine, here's what he says. I mean, he's he's bringing about the implications of an evolutionary worldview. He says, no gods, no life after death, no ultimate foundation for ethics, mm -hmm. no ultimate meaning in life, and no human free will are all deeply connected to an evolutionary war, worldview or perspective. Sure. So 
I'm trying to show if I could show that there is a moral law that is outside of ourselves that we are all accountable to and that we know we're we know we're guilty. We know that our conscience is pricked when we commit something that we call the Bible calls it sin. I mean, that's what that's what we realize. And I, I wanted to use this example, you know, just just a couple of weeks ago. Think about that school shooting that happened and all those kids were were murdered by a shooter. Uh, you know, people realize there's something wrong here. There's something wrong going on in this world. And that to me shows you that there is some things that are right and some things that are wrong. Well, who gave that law system a lawgiver, which could only be God, the ultimate lawgiver. So I love Romans 2, 14 through 16. And uh, would you mind reading that, Paul? For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts, accusing or else excusing them, in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. So there, you know, of course, Paul is kind of reflecting on, in this context, how the Gentile, the, the Jews were under the law of Moses at the time. The Gentiles did not have the written law of Moses, but yet they knew there was a moral law that they were accountable to. And of course, we all understand now, today we're accountable to the law of Christ. Right. That's what we're under today. Right. And we all realize we, we, we've sinned against God and we've separated ourselves from him. And we are in need of his grace and to be saved from our sins by which he is has provided for us the way in which we can be saved. And we'll talk more about that as we travel along. So that's why we end with almost every verse, I mean, mm -hmm. chorus, so that they are without excuse. I mean, when you think about all these three arguments of cause and effect, yep. and design, moral yep. law, morals, yep. I mean, <laughs> man, yeah. just, yeah. How can an atheist say if when he gets to the day of judgment, well, God, you didn't give me enough evidence. Yeah. You didn't tell me personally. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, one of the reasons I think God, um, so to speak, there's this, um, it's called, some people call it divine hiddenness. And basically that God, he gives us free will. You know, he, he, he gives us a, so much evidence that yes. you can know he exists. Yes. But he wants you to choose to right. follow him. Right. He's not just going to say, well, look at me. Here I am. Let me yeah. put, my, let me put or, my name in the sky here. Yeah. Or the way yeah. he used to do it when he would kill people like mm -hmm. Nadab and Abihu or, or when he blinded Saul, um, we don't have that anymore. And I agree with that. I think he wants, he's looking for, well, he said he's looking for true worshipers. And if we were just scared into submission, like fully like that, you know, mm -hmm. right. I, I, maybe it's just more acceptable to him when it's just earnest, sincere, logical, evidence-based mm -hmm. seeking him and he's looking for those who are looking for him he's looking for everyone but he wants the ones that are seeking him which goes back to our song on seek the lord <laughs> yeah that's right watch watch that one if you like yeah uh so then verse two so i'll let t read this can i know can i know your word is true can i know can i know that it's from you can i know can i know you've given it Yes, I know it is true. Yes, I know it's from you. Yes, I know it is your word. Now, of course, uh, there are other books that do claim to be from God. There's the Book of right. Mormon and the Quran and some others. Right. Um, but here, here's the thing we're going to talk about. So the Bible does make the claim that it is God's word. Now, that doesn't make it true. Right. It, there's evidence that does back up that claim, which we'll talk about. Right. So we have such verses like this. And so I'm going to read this one. All mm -hmm. scriptures given by the inspiration of God is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. So the man of God may be complete, 
thoroughly equipped for every good work. And then there's John 17, 17. And Paul, would you mind reading that one? If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. And in which Jesus, he always did provide evidence that he came from God, as we right. discover. And then John 8, 31, 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. In which John seventeen seventeen says, "Your word is truth." Truth. Amen. So, now, so we've 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 think about those three arguments of God's existence. We can know He exists. Now, would this being we haven't really, um, you know, what what God are we talking about here? Well, would this being want to reveal Himself to us? And the answer to that is, of course, um, I believe, yes, based on the attributes that we do see in creation. Um, talks about in Acts 14, for example, how Paul and Barnabas, you'll remember, uh, said that, um, they said about God that he, he did, he gave, he was good to the people and that he provided them the rain and gave them fruitful seasons. So God is a good God. You can know that from what he's given us. Well, if God is willing to give us physical food and help us grow our food, how much more does he want us to know him with regards to spiritual food and right. hungering and thirsting after him? Right. Um, so the Bible claims to be inspired of God, but does he claim have uh, back up, back up with evidence? So, Think about an example if I were to claim, uh, for example, I'm Donald Trump. Well, of course, everybody would say, you're, you're crazy, man. You're not Donald Trump. Well, you'd be right. I mean, I need to show evidence that I'm him. Um, well, I can, I can definitely show you evidence I'm Shane Fisher. I can show you my birth mm -hmm. certificate. I can show you my driver's license. And I can show you some other things. Um, the point is, I'm showing evidence to back up my claim. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see in regards to one of the great arguments for the Bible being God's word is predictive prophecy, predictive prophecy. So would you like to read the course too? For the prophecies are full of all his great details for they were completed and fulfilled. We read in his word for the timing. It expands across the great ages for this. I know for this. I know and I'm without excuse. Okay. So there are always three necessary ingredients for true prophecy. And I know prophecy is used, in, so to speak, to just speak something for God. But it's also used in the sense of predicting the future sometimes. And that's what we're talking about here. And that there's significant timing. So, you know, I, I predict uh, tomorrow it's going to you know, rain or something. Uh, that's not, that's nothing special. <laughs> you know, uh, specific details you have to give in regards to that prophecy. And it can't just be 90% fulfilled. It's got to be 100% completely fulfilled. And, you know, we could talk a lot about many prophecies. And I just want to look talk about one. And this is Isaiah 53, uh, which is one of the most famous ones. Sure. So you want to read this one, Paul? Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. And we did not esteem him. You know, I think about some of the things that are mentioned here. I don't want to talk about all of them, but, you know, think about as a root out of dry ground. Um, you think about how Jesus grew up. Where did he grow up at? He grew up in Nazareth. And, you know, Philip said, uh, or Nathaniel, Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> I mean, so, saying that, I mean, Jesus did not grow up in a palace, you know, surrounded by all these servants and just, you know, uh, he was, he, he wasn't rich uh, physically. And right. so we need to recognize that all these details here, he was indeed despised and rejected by men. And uh, people did 
despise and did not esteem him. And then we go on. Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. I mean, it implies there that Jesus did not sin. Jesus actually was, you know, he was he took the punishment for our for our sins. And um, so all these great details. So Isaiah wrote this around, so to speak, 750 years before Christ was even born. Now, some people might ask this question, Paul. Well, how do you know that the supposed prophecy was not fulfilled until after it was written down? You know, that's a that's a really good question. And, uh, you know, and the way that we can understand this is because we know Jesus lived around this time period of, you know, he died on the cross around 30 A.D. But we know that in 1947, there was uh, these uh, caves they found at the Qumran in, around the Dead Sea, uh, close to the Dead Sea. They found these uh, scrolls. And one of them was called the Great Isaiah Scroll, and they were able to date it around 125 years before Christ was born. Mm. All right. I mean, just assuming the case. All right. Let's just take the late date, 125 BC. Well, that's that's still 130 years. <laughs> so, I mean, that's amazing to me. Uh, but, of course, you know, we believe what the Bible says, that Isaiah did live uh, around 750 BC or so. So that that's how I know that, um, you know, such as these prophecies here that we have an example of a copy of the scrolls around that time. Um, In fact, we go to Acts 8, 31 through 34, where Philip goes to the Ethiopian eunuch and he says to him, how uh, the Ethiopian eunuch says, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him in the place in the scripture, which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. And his humiliation, his justice was taken away. Who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this, or of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. I mean, I that, love that. That Jesus is the fulfillment of Isaiah 53. Um, so it's just amazing to see, uh, you know, just, just an example that we can know God's word is true because these prophecies did indeed come to pass. Okay, so you want to read verse 3? Can I know, can I know your son exists? Can I know, can I know that he is real? Can I know, can I know he is divine? Yes, I know he exists. Yes, I know he is real. Yes, I know he is divine. You know, there's uh, people today, Paul, that even try to will state, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, he never existed. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Mm. Even even sources outside the New Testament would right. show that he did indeed exist. And I'm just going to, let's just go to the Bible first because John is an eye, uh, the Gospel of John is an eyewitness testimony as we find in John 21. And so he says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then jumping down to verse 14, and the word became flesh, dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only but gotten of the father, full of grace and truth. And so we, we, not just John, but even sources, even if we were just to handle, let's just say, just handling the New Testament as if they were just historical documents only. Well, still, if, even just having them as historical documents, you know that Jesus did indeed exist. Yeah. And you know that Josephus, who was a Jewish historian, we got Tacitus, a Roman historian, we got Lucius, a Gentile, Maribar, Serapion, and Clement of Rome, and, and, and Polycarp, who were early Christians um, after in the, in the second century, and so you got all that evidence of early sources demonstrating that Jesus did exist. Now, how do we know he's divine? Because of, once again, just like with the Word of God, just because it claims something to be true doesn't make it true. Right. It show, he, Jesus did indeed show evidence. And three of these that we're bringing about is prophecies, 
miracles. And of course he was resurrected from the dead. Right. So for he has fulfilled the prophecies, a chosen one for he has performed the miracles. They are verified. He was seen alive again by many in the flesh for this. I know for this, I know, and I'm without excuse. And there's so many prophecies we could look at um, with regard to Jesus. And we already looked at Isaiah 53. I love what Jesus said um, to his disciples um, after he rose from the dead. He says, then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Mm hmm. I would have loved to have been in that conversation. To see what oh. Jesus would have said to them. That would be mm -hmm. amazing. Yes, that would be brilliant. Um, did he mention this one? Psalm 22. He may have. We don't know. But, you know, this is one of the Psalms of David. And uh, you mind reading this one? I am poured out like water and all my bone bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It has melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death, for dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now you think about David and you know, how he died. In 2 Kings 1, we learn how he died. He, he, you know, he died as an old man. He wasn't crucified. But here we see that this, this, so this must be a prophecy that's beyond David, which would be to the son of David, which is Jesus himself, in which he was crucified. There were nails that pierced through his hands and his feet. Um, then he has performed the miracles. They are verified. And which, what's really interesting is uh, when the first thing that, uh, or one of the first things that, Peter talks to that crowd about. He says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst. Now, notice this, as you yourselves also know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love how throughout Acts, you know, the only thing they can, well, or even throughout the gospel accounts, they'll either say, Oh, he's he's doing this by the power of Satan, or they're gonna. We can't deny that this has been done. <laughs> yeah, but they they don't deny that a miracle has been performed. Is what's interesting, right. and and what I find interesting is even the enemy attestation later that comes about. Like for example, from Celsus here, he lived in a one seventy five A.D. and uh, he he claims that Jesus actually went down to Egypt. And I'm just going to read that part in bold there. It says, while there he acquired certain magical powers, which Egyptians pride themselves on possessing. Well, was he, you know, what's the implication there? Well, he's, he's not denying that Jesus did something powerful. Um, he's, he's actually saying that he did something that's, you know, out of this world. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of interesting. And then you got the Jewish Talmud 400 to 700 AD. Uh, like Jesus practiced magic and led Israel astray is what it says. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they're admitting something. Mm -hmm. So they're hostile witnesses. Isn't that yeah. accurate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's they're what hostile they witnesses. Yeah. Hostile witnesses are ones who are speaking against the person who they are. They're, they're the ones who are verifying the person that they are speaking against. They're mm -hmm. actually proving his existence. And even though they're was... against him. And he was seen alive again by many in the flesh. Of course, referring to the greatest miracle of all, which is the resurrection of Christ. Hang on right right here Bert, before we go, before we continue. I honestly didn't know how amazing Shane Fisher is on teaching. Thank you so much, Shane. Yeah, I, I've, I've learned my lesson. Yeah, I, I found out. It's a blessing when Shane brings it. I love it. Thank you, Debbie. Um, so 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 8. Yeah. Read that one, Paul. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. 
For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that he was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James, then by all the apostles, then, last of all, he was seen by me also as by one born out of due time. You know, what's amazing to me about this is here was once the man we call Saul of Tarsus who persecuted Christians, and yet something special happened on, on that road to Damascus. There's something that, you know, made him change. Well, what was it? I mean, what what drove this man to becoming from becoming an enemy to Christianity to becoming a the, one of the greatest friends of Christianity ever ever? Um, only I think the the resurrection of Christ can explain that. And of course, Amen. And, and you think about you know did Jesus rise from the grave? You got either no or yes, and a lot of skeptics and. Um, a, people out there they'll accept some of these minimal what we call minimal facts so that they'll say someone will believe jesus did exist some of them will say jesus yeah was crucified he died that way um people will say yeah those disciples they were in despair they were they were scared out of their lives scared for their lives and they were you know in fear and then there was the empty tomb what happened to the body and then there were these appearances to the disciples that were that they claimed were from Jesus. And then they were transformed. They were changed. They went from being fearful to being some of the most courageous men who would even die for what they believed to be the truth. And then they, of course, the message is pretty early. Um, and then it happened exactly where it said it would happen in Jerusalem and spread from there to Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And we know that Sunday, there's something special about Sunday because it's the first day of the week in which Jesus rose again. And then, of course, the church began in Acts 2. And we know that James, he was a skeptic. I mean, he and John chapter 7, but he changed. And we also know Saul of Tarsus. He was once an enemy to Christianity, but he changed. So what accounts for all these facts? And, you know, a lot of people will say they'll come up with various theories, but they just don't all fit these facts. The only one that has the best explanation for the facts is that Jesus did indeed rose from the dead. That's what makes the most sense. And we could, of course, yeah. talk a lot more about those things. Let me, let me pull up a script uh, sure. comment here. How do we know that George Washington exists? Did you know that there's more evidence for Jesus than, than Washington? I, I actually shared that with um, a person who I had been working with. And uh, it was a pair of sisters. And um, they're both educated and I'm not. And I said that. And the one sister who was only really, really educated. The other one is really, 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 really educated. <laughs> Um, I said that to the one and, and she kind of paused. I was like, yeah, there's, there's more historical, impartial, secular evidence of the existence of Jesus Christ than there is that George Washington existed. Hmm. And, and the one sister was like, she turned to the smarter sister and the smarter <laughs> sister in silence said, neither one of them, you know, are neither one of them are Christians. Mm -hmm. And the one that's really smart, she she just shook her head and, and acknowledged that that's the fact. She didn't say anything. She the one you know the the one sister looked to the other sister and you know mm -hmm. they didn't like it, but that's just a fact. There's more existence. There's more evidence that Jesus Christ existed as a living human being than there is that that George Washington. Like more impartial evidence. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just a fact. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, when I was writing this song, I was like, this has to drive us to a conclusion. And, and you know, the reason I wrote this verse is because, uh, Paul, you know, as I, I have, when you ask people, are you going to heaven? 
sometimes I've heard Christians say, well, I hope, I hope so. so. Yeah. And that's, that's a sad reality. Yeah. That is, is not, uh, the Bible teaches that you can have assurance. Right. And so this is a reason for the fourth. It's verse. beautiful. It is a beautiful needed verse. The comments I have been, this is, this is yeah, let's loaded go. with teaching as usual. A Shane, uh, him is always loaded with teaching. I saw a comment blazed by that I've missed. I've missed most of the comments, but Jimmy Bagwell said um, uh, that it doesn't, I can't remember how he said it, but there, when you need to get teaching into the hymn, the uh, duration of the hymn that we were talking about earlier, the length of the hymn, it's only a suggestion. It kind of, it kind of doesn't matter. We've got to get the doctrine into it, and that's why it's okay. But musically, it's it's good too, and it's also worth it to keep going. Mm -hmm. We can focus on some of the comments if you want to. First uh, John chapter five assurance. Yeah. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Yeah. Hope is not a maybe, it's a guarantee. That's good. CJ says his sweet niece is with. Good to see you. I'm glad you're with us. Mm -hmm. uh, let me scroll back because I was looking for. Tony's with. I don't know if we saw that. Good to see you, Tony. Uh, Teresa's with us. Good to see you, sister. I really wanted to catch that. Oh, oh, I wanted to catch this one for sure. Atheism in a nutshell. In the beginning, there was nothing. Then, for no reason, nothing exploded and became something. <laughs> After millions of years, this something became other somethings. The something of these somethings became living somethings. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is good. And, the, and they say we're the free thinkers. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We're sheep. We are God's canvas. We are his mirror. I'm so glad to be Jesus' sheep. Here we go. We've seen this one. Explain how a brown cow eats green grass and makes yellow <laughs> cheese and white milk. Mm -hmm. Larry greeted you. Nice to meet you, Larry. Yeah. In South Alabama, tractors for date night in the drive-in theater. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Tankersley's with us. Um, I really wanted to just keep going until I saw. Um, if a song actually has something to say, length becomes more of a suggestion. Boy, I butchered that very sound comment. Mm -hmm. Looks like Sam has uh, submitted lyrics to Levi to work with. That's good. Wonderful. All right. Oh, th there you go. I never even thought about the length. I was so enjoying the lyrics. Lyrics are quite moving, quite, quite moving. All right. Oh, mm. poor baby. All right. Okay. Getting back to it. Verse four, you mean to read it? Sure. Can I know that I am saved? Can I know with certainty? Can I know with confidence? Yes, I know I am saved. Yes, I know this assured. Yes, I know I'm confident. Okay, and uh, we, there's first I forgot to put those verses in. So First John five thirteen talks about that that we may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Let me just quickly bring those up real quick. Sure. Yeah, I knew I'd get one I, that I'm fast at it. If you want me to do it, if you want to get I'll First get a, John, I'll get Ephesians one. Okay, First John what five thirteen. I got it. I'm already there, and I can put it on the screen too. Oh, sorry, CJ. I totally missed that. I didn't catch that she was six months old. He was joking. Sorry. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's uh, 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. 
that you may know you have eternal life. Yeah, not hope. No. <laughs> then uh, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and him also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. And, uh, but it, why, you know, who, you know, what is our ground for assurance? Well, it's because of what Jesus did for us. Right. That's why. Yeah. And, um, first Timothy, I mean, it says, uh, for I know that God, Jesus gave himself for all mankind. For I know that from the cross, the blood and love was out poured out. For he came and then obeyed unto the point of death. For this I know, for this I know, and I'm without excuse. So here are some of those verses. So if you want to read those, Paul. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God desires all men to be saved. But not all will be saved, unfortunately. Unfortunately. 1 John 2, 1 and 2, My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he himself is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. And then, um, for I know from, that from the cross, the blood and love was poured out. Uh, of course, John nineteen thirty four. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And um, when we got um, also, for he came and then obeyed unto the point of death, which is, of course, Philippians 2, 5 through 11. I'm going to read the part in green. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. And then uh, Romans 5, 8 through 11, this, you know, God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So that's something we should be ever grateful for. Yes. And then uh, 2 Timothy 2, 12 and 13, uh, if we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So I'm very thankful that for what Jesus did on the cross, that it brought up, it can, it, it can bring about salvation for, for people who want to be saved. But like we always need to talk about, unfortunately, the religious world just gets the response on the part of man, um, uh, they just don't understand the biblical definition of faith and obedience. Right. And right. Uh, right. It just, it really tugs at me that people don't understand. We, we all recognize that God's gift of eternal life is in Christ Jesus. No doubt about it. We can't earn our salvation. That is so true. Yeah. But God has conditions. Yes. And he has yeah. come. He does have commandments. I mean, when I read Acts 10, 47, he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the yeah. Lord. <laughs> yeah. He command that's a commandment. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it uh, doesn't matter what those commandments are. It does not matter what his conditions are. No matter what those conditions are, we still can't earn salvation. Right. We have conditions. We can't earn salvation. Both are true. And so a sinner, how can he contact the blood of Christ? It's very simple. I mean, all these verses that we have here that we've, I know we've mentioned many times before, but it's sad that so many people reject the truth. And um, we shouldn't, I hope if you're watching this, maybe you are in a denomination that you realize, hey, I know the truth that God exists. I know that Jesus uh, is the son of God. I know that the Bible is his word. But now you realize, I know I'm, I'm not saved because I have not obeyed what God said for me to do in order to be saved. Well, I mean, it's pretty clear here from these passages of Scripture that we have here up. I mean, there's a lot more we could put. But as mm -hmm. Hebrews 5, 8, and 9 says, He became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey, obey him. him. 
Look at this one right so, here. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Please, no, no, please continue. Well, I was just going to say, so um, this all leads up to, I'm glad that Paul thought of this great ending. So I will trust and I'll obey for I'm without excuse. And I really hope people chills. will do that. It gives me chills. It gives mm -hmm. me chills. Sonia Radford, thank you, Jesus, for dying for us sinners. And if we remain faithful till death, we will have a heavenly home if we follow the truth. That is a mm -hmm. true statement, sister. Thank you for that. Truth is so simple. Why don't people just believe it? Why don't people believe it? Yep, it is. It is really simple. And I wanted you to see this, Shane. Wait, we, I, I totally agree with this. Shane, you have done a terrific job. You're so knowledgeable. Shane is a blessing. I love working with Shane. I, I, am, I am blessed to be able to work with Shane. I, don't, I can't imagine not having Shane to work with. I would not want to work without Shane. Thanks, Paul. Anything else? Lisa? Yeah, we're going to play that song again now that now we've backed up every single lyric with scripture. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. So we've, we've covered the, um, the scriptures that support this, and I pray that it's a blessing to you. It is, it is a wonderful, wonderful, encouraging teaching him. As, as I'm singing, the, as, as Shane was reading the, the lyrics for the chorus specifically, I was... I, I'm sorry. I just, I am flipped out. We have babies in this aquarium and I don't know where they came from. Baby fish. I'm not kidding. We just put, wow. <laughs> sorry. Look, we caught a fish out of the, I, I am so sorry, but we caught a fish out of the creek today. A pair of them, I put them in here and they've already had babies. That is crazy. I'm really sorry to get distracted by that. I'm so sorry. I don't even know where I was. Wow. Sorry. Where was I, Shane? Do you know? Um, well, I do know that we're going to play the song, but before we play yep. the song, um, I guess after the song, we want to uh, have a prayer, uh, prayer yeah. request. Yeah. We're going to be putting yeah. the prayer request in. Put in the prayer time. request during the, uh, the playing of the song for the second time. Um. I my children are going to be excited about that. Sorry. And, God I, and I do, I do want to end with a plea. If you have children or grandchildren, please teach them this song. Yeah. Um, we live in an acts 17 culture. I call it today in which, you know, what I mean by that is there was an acts two culture at one time in America where people were familiar with the Bible and you could study the Bible with them and you had some common ground, but, now we have a case where people don't even believe in God and people don't even believe the Bible to be the word of God. And we need to be ready to give an answer for the reason of the hope within us with meekness and fear. And so one of the things we can do is train our children. And I really ask you to do that. Yes. And please. I think singing a song like this will definitely help them. Dennis Smith, Paul, I've been talking to you about the lesson tomorrow. He's, he's going to be teaching tomorrow. Uh, it's talking about the church of the Bible and, uh, and Shane, thank you for all you just said. It gives me comfort and confidence as I teach tomorrow. That is extremely encouraging, Brother Dennis. Thank you. All right. You ready to play this thing again, Shane? Mm -hmm. And put all your right. prayer requests in. Yeah, put in your prayer requests, and Shane will lead us in, this, in, the, in a prayer after that. Yeah, there we go. That's what we'll need to pray for. One of the things we'll need to pray for. Put your prayer request in while while the hymn plays for the second time. We pray this hymn is a blessing to you. I love it. It is a, a blessing to me for sure. I love recording. I remember what I was saying. So when when Shane was reading out the lyrics, I was hearing the music in my head, and it's it's just a compelling combination of of Bible truth with um appropriate melody, and, and it's it's wonderful. All right, let me pull this one up. It's time to play Can I Know? Again, for the second time, we pray it's a blessing to you. Now we've dug into lyrics. We know that it's the truth. Let's listen again. Can I know? Can I know? Can I know? Can I know that you exist? Can I know? I know you exist. Yes, 
I know you are real. Yes, I know you are my God. For I know the great design demands a designer. For I know the universe demands a powerful cause. For I know a moral law demands a lawgiver. For this I know. For this I know. And I'm without excuse. Can I know? to the point 
Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we got two requests, I see. Good. All right. So we've got the um, the request. Yes, I, I think I agree with that. I've had that thought, too. <laughs> Thank you, Gwen. This is uh, Shane's, mostly Shane's song. I edited with him. And I wrote the harmonies, but the the, mel the melody is Shane's, and most of the lyrics are Shane's. All right, so we've got Jonathan's request first is pray for the world, this world, and its people that obedience to the gospel can be had. Amen. And Shirley has a, a request. I have a friend who needs your prayers. She's really in a dilemma. Sounds good. Thank you, Kathleen. It is. It's a beautiful, truth-filled song. Thank you, darling. I'm so glad you're with. Thank you, Debbie. I'm glad you're with. So I'm I am grateful for all of your um, participation, and it's a blessing to us that you would be here for this. Well, let's go to God in prayer. Please do. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we're so thankful, Father, that you give us all talents that we can use to bring to glorify your name. Thank you, Father, for allowing me to have the part to do melodies and for Paul to be able to do harmonies and and for others, Lord, who are part of that uh, talent of doing that. We're so thankful, Father, we can speak truth and sing truth and uh, glorify you and Pray, Father, this song will help us to remember the evidence that you exist and for your word being true for Jesus, being the Son of God, and knowing, Father, if we are uh, Christians who have, uh, we know that if we follow Your will, we know we can, we can know with assurance that we are saved. Father, we just pray for those who have asked for prayers. Pray for Shirley's friend. Uh, we pray for the world, Lord, that we can reach them with the gospel, Father's. So many people who are lost and help us to have the opportunity presented to us through your providence to help bring them to you. May your will be done in all things, Lord. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shane. I really appreciate that prayer. All right, church, I hope you have a wonderful day. We, we hope that you have a wonderful day of worship tomorrow. We pray that your worship is accepted by God and it's fervent and it is edifying and that you edify both. Look at that. Hello, Shane. I met him when he was with Travis. I'm so happy to see brothers working together in harmony. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. <laughs> and you put that harmony in quotes. That's right. <laughs> Uh, I do have an announcement to make. Um, thank you, sister. I do have an announcement to make. I've had Shane on with me uh, several times now. I guess this is probably the third or fourth one. Something like that. And I have two other brothers who are going to step up and, and uh, come teach the hymns that we co-wrote together. That is Larry Paisley. I don't know how I'm, I'm, do you know Larry? Shane? Larry, Larry Paisley's a brother. I don't he's older than us. I don't know. I, older than us. Like as as much older than me as I am to you. I'm not sure how old he is actually. Um and he is uh gonna come on. He's the one that wrote we wrote um 
Oh no. Now I gotta look it up. <laughs> I gotta look it up. Uh no, can't pull it up. Paul Mays Larry Paisley. Nope. I tried it on YouTube and I'm trying on Facebook. I get it. What is it? Video. Come on. Welcome home. It's called Welcome Home. Um to die so you could live with him on high he wants you with him by and by and longs your coming with a sigh alright that's enough so that's a piece of that so that is uh, Larry Paisley and he wrote um, Welcome Home he wrote the lyrics and sent them to me and I wrote the music and he will be on for an episode like this, and, and we will be. I, I told him he had he had options where we could co-teach, or he could run the show, and I could just read his scriptures like I do for Shane or whatever. So um, he's coming up in a future episode. I, I'd say within two weeks or something like that, maybe three. And so is Jonathan Jenkins, the younger, not the Jonathan <laughs> Jenkins that runs DBS, but Jonathan Jenkins, the younger, and the bigger. I think he's like, he's a big man, like six, three or something. I don't know. Something like that. He's like 35. I think he is. So Jonathan and I wrote glory, praise his name as well as two or one or two others. I think, I think I've done two or three with him and uh, glory, glory, praise his name is the song that he did with, with Jonathan and he's going to come on and, and we'll, we'll co-teach on that one too. So just wanted to announce that. That's exciting. Jimmy's asking when I'm coming to MLA, so I'm going to look that up. It is. Uh, what? How'd that happen? Um, 722 through 724. July, July 22nd through July 24th. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to preach. I think I get to preach seven times during a three-day meeting, which is my favorite format. Just crank them out. Excited about it. Thanks for asking. All right. It's been a wonderful evening. I'm so glad that you were with us. It's been a blessing that you were here. Shane, you're a blessing to me and all of us, and we're grateful for you. Thank you for, for writing a beautiful teaching hymn and allowing me to be part of it and for teaching us this evening. You are you are a blessing. Thank you. So are you, brother. Yes, thank you. That's kind. Okay. We've closed in prayer already, so we're good. All right. Love every single one of you. Have a wonderful Lord's Day tomorrow, and uh, I'll see you on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Those of you who have a chance to come out and, and those who don't, we'll see you Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern again. All right. Good night.